name is Luis Anthony Ast, the video math tutor, and welcome to the algebra lesson Solving Linear Equations Part 2, Applications. Now before we get started, I highly recommend you take the time to go over a few lessons. These include basic math, lesson number 6, fractions. Basic math, lesson number 7, units of measurement. Go over the algebra lesson, formulas from geometry, and of course, you should go over part one of this lesson. And with that said, let's get started. A formula is an equation consisting of two or more variables that describe some rule. Solving for a variable consists of using mathematical properties of equality to isolate, get by itself, the variable asked for on one side of the equation, and all other variables and constants are on the other side of the equation. Example number one. Solve the formula A equals 2L plus 2W for the W. The first step is let's go ahead and rewrite this formula over. And I want to get W by itself. So the first step is to move 2L to the other side. How? Well, it's being added, so we do the opposite operation. We subtract. Those cancel. I'm left with A minus 2L equals 2W. Well, w is almost by itself, but not quite. So the next step is to remove the 2. How? Well, it's being multiplied, so we divide both sides by 2. And I'm left with a minus 2l all over 2 equals w. And that's the answer. Now, traditionally, the variable is by itself, that's been isolated, should be on the left-hand side. But it's okay, technically, how it is, right? But let's move it to the left-hand side. So just reflect everything. So we're left with There's our answer. When manipulating formulas, oftentimes there's more than one way of getting the correct answer. Try making the answer as compact and simplified as possible. Now, if you have a multiple choice type of a test question, you may get a solution that is not available to you. You look at your answers, A, B, C, D, you don't see a match. So what happens? You select none of the above. And that might be a mistake. So be careful. Here's a hot tip. If you get an answer for a multiple choice test that's in a fraction form, and you don't see this as one of your options, try changing all the signs of your different terms. So the positive terms make a negative, the negative make a positive. So something like this, for example, would look like this. Now, I doubt you'll have this one as a possible solution since traditionally we don't have any negatives in the denominator. So I can move this negative out in front. That's allowed. And I can make the top part a little more compact. See, if you switch places, I don't need the plus sign. So I guess that looks a little more simplified. And possibly this is one of the options of A, B, C, D on your test. Of course, if you still don't see it as one of your options, then the answer really was none of the above. <laughs> Example two, solve the formula for x. Find any restriction. So by restrictions mean what values of the variables are not allowed. So looking at this, well, we have a fraction and the denominator is not allowed to be zero. So that's our first restriction. The value of C not be zero. I want to get X by itself. Let's go ahead and move the D to the other side. So I'm going to subtract D from both sides and we're left with A minus D equals BX over C. 
Now, at this point, I can remove the B or the C. It's probably a little bit easier to remove the C first, but let's do that. So I'm going to perform the opposite of division and simplification. I'm going to multiply both sides by C. These then cancel, and I'm left with, let's go ahead and write that down over here. I'm going to have C times the quantity A minus D equals B times X. What's next? Well, I want to get X by itself, so I'm going to now divide both sides by B. I'm going to do that. X is by itself, but traditionally again on the left hand side. So let's rewrite this. X is equal C times the quantity A minus D all over B. And that is my final answer. Of course, I'm given the restrictions here. My denominator is not allowed to be zero. So you say B cannot be zero, it's not equal to zero. And from beforehand, C is not equal to zero. So right here is the final answer. Before we continue, I want to point out a few things. This isn't the only possible answer you could have. There are ways of changing it around a bit. For example, oh, how about I could distribute the C to the A and the D. That way I, I would remove the parentheses. What else? Well, instead of multiplying by C, I could have divided by B. Or even slicker, I could have multiplied this both sides by C over B. That's a possibility. Do that on both sides of the equation. That would zap out the B and the C at the same time. What else? Here I have the A minus D. I could have written instead negative D plus A. I could have done that. Again, it's not as compact as I'd like. I just mentioned these so you'd be aware of the different possibilities of what the final answer can look like. Example three, solve F equals 9 fifths C plus 32 for C. What's our first step? Eh, how about moving the 32 to the other side? So let's subtract 32 and we're left with F minus 32 equals 9 fifths C. Now I want to remove the fraction that's in front of the C. Well, what can we do? I could divide both sides by 9 or multiply both sides by 5. The slick way to remove a fraction is to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Let's flip it around. So 5 ninths, 5 ninths. That way, see, the 5's cancel and the 9's cancel. Hmm. So I'm left with 5 ninths times the quantity F minus 32 equals C. Again, we're done, but let's see the drill. We know the drill. So C equals 5 ninths times the quantity F minus 32. Very nice. In basic math, lesson number six, fractions, one type of conversion was not done because we do not have knowledge of how to solve linear equations. But now we can do it. Now the procedure is a bit complicated, but don't worry, we'll do it step by step. Now the best way to illustrate is with an example. So let's go ahead and try example number four, to convert 0 0.3 bar into a fraction. The bar over the three means that the digit 3 repeats itself an infinite number of times. It's 0 0.33333 forever. So the first step is we're going to let x equals the repeating decimal. Let's go ahead and expand it out. 
Okay, so 0 0.33333 forever. Step number two is we're going to multiply both sides of the equation, both sides, by the power of 10 that matches the number of repeating digits. And we're probably going, oh, what? Let me explain. I want to multiply both sides of the equation by a power of 10. A power of 10 means something like, for example, oh, 10 to the first. That's a power of 10. In this case, it's 10. First power, if it's one repeating digit, it would be 10 squared, power of 2, if there were two repeating digits. For example, 4, 7, 4, 7, 4, 7, 4, 7. I'll multiply both sides by 10 squared, which is 100. If the repeating number of digits were 3, for example, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, forever, 10 cubed. 3 repeating digits, power of 3, which is 1,000. So I would multiply both sides of the equation by a thousand. So that's what I mean by step two. Multiply both sides of the equation by a power of 10 that matches the number of repeating digits. In this case, it would be just the first one. I'm going to go ahead and take a moment to erase this part and continue with the problem. Let's go ahead and actually do step two. Multiply both sides by the power of 10 we we're going to do, which in this case is just and to the first power, 10. So 10x. Now, the nice thing about multiplying both sides of an equation by power of 10 is very easy to do. You just scoot over the decimal point the same number of places as the number of zeros you see here. So one zero here means one place. This had been 100, two places. 1,000, three places, and so on. So if I just scoot that over one place, I'm going to get 3.5. Three, 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 forever. That's step two. Step three is to rewrite the equation. So I'm going to rewrite it by switching their order. So 10x equals 3.3333 forever. And right below it, the original one. X equals. 0 0.3333 forever. Again, make sure everything is lined up nicely. Equals the decimal points and everything. It's important to have a zero in front of a decimal if there's no other number here. So the decimal points are lined up. So that's step three. Step four is subtract the equations. So four, I'm going to subtract one from the other. Now, the nice thing when you do this is that pretty much everything cancels except very little at this area over here. So I have 3 over 3. What does that mean? 3 minus 3 is 0. 3s minus 3s again. All the 3s just cancel out. So they're just 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. I won't write them all, but over here just before the point, I'm going to put 3 minus 3 is 0. And then line up the decimal point. 3 minus 0 is 3 equals, and then over here on the left-hand side, you have 10x minus x is 9x. And that takes care of step 4. Step 5 is solve for x. So let's go ahead, drop that in there, step 5. And so let's go ahead and just divide both sides by 9. That cancels, so I'm left with x equals 3 ninths, which can be reduced to 1 third. So let's go ahead and formalize the answer. 0 0.3 bar is equal to 1 third. Example 5. Convert 3.12 bar into a fraction. Again, the bar over the 12 means that the digits 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2 just repeat themselves on forever. So let's do the steps for this. Step 1, I'm going to let x equals the repeating decimal. 
3.121212121 forever. Step two, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the power of 10 that matches the number of repeating digits. Well, it's going to be two places, so two zeros. So it's going to be 100 x equals, so if you scoot that over, you're going to have 312.121212 forever. Step three, go ahead and rewrite these equations. So I'm going to write the second one first. And then put the first one right below it. But again, make sure everything is lined up nicely. So we're going to have x equals, again, the decimal point needs to be lined up. That's important. So I'm going to just write this carefully right there. And then one, two, one, two, one, two. And again, you might say, well, this has four sets of one, two. This has three. Is that different? No, I mean, it's actually an infinite number of sets. That's one, two, forever. It doesn't matter how many really you write over here. Okay, step four is let's just go ahead and subtract the two. But to save a little bit of writing, I'm just going to put the subtraction symbol right there. And notice what happens. Two minus two, zero. One minus one, zero. Two minus two, zero, 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 zero. zero. It all gets wiped out. And then just go ahead and go 312 minus 3, well, that's just going to give me 309 equals 100x minus x is 99x. Step 5. Solve for x. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by 99. It cancels. I'm left with x equals 309 over 99. And that can be res reduced a bit. There's a 3 in everything if you think about it. So I'm left with 103 over 33. And that is my answer. Again, you can formalize the answer. I'm a little bit out of space. Let's go ahead and just write that over here. So 3. 0.12 bar is equal to 103 over 33. And there's my answer. A word problem, story, or apply problem is a real world application of algebra where English words or phrases are used in a situation. Well, I hope you like this free preview of this lesson. To see the rest, please visit my website to order the DVD or you can download the video on demand. The complete lesson includes many more examples worked out in meticulous detail on the board. Plus, there's a special quiz at the end of the lesson. With that said, this is Luis Anthony Asks saying, keep studying. Bye-bye.